Daniel switches gears. And most Bible commentators say that in verse 36, we're looking forward to what we would call the tribulation time in the Antichrist. Now, why am I saying all that? Because what you get from Daniel is, Daniel 10 tells us that there is a Persian connection. Uh, there's something going on with Persia uh, that is specifically pointed out by God. Now, go to Ezekiel. I want to show you uh, Ezekiel 38 because we have our second Persian. Um, just back up a book. Uh, Ezekiel actually was captured and went to the land before uh, land of Babylon before Daniel. There were three times the Babylonians uh, took prisoners and uh, most likely in the first of the uh, times Ezekiel was taken and the second uh, uh, group, another group came and then Daniel went in the final one in 586. But uh, look at chapter 38 and this is what's so interesting. Uh, now the word of the Lord came to me. I'm in Ezekiel chapter 38 and said, son of man, set your face against Gog in the land of Magog. Uh, the prince of Rosh, actually Rosh means prince. So it's the, the prince or Rosh of Meshach and Tubal. So Rosh doesn't seem to be a separate geographic place. It's, it's a, Rosh is always used as a kind of a title, um, like Pharaoh. Pharaoh isn't a name, it's a title. It's like president. You know, we talk about the president, we know who we're talking about, but you know, in future, if we just say the president, they don't know which one unless they can date us. Well, this, this Rosh thing is a prince, so it's whoever is the prince in Meshach and Tubal. So that's great, and you know, it doesn't really matter. But, but look at what it says if you keep going down to verse five. It says, there are gonna be all of these who come against Israel. And I only want you to see the, the first one in verse five. I mean, all of them are significant because, I mean, just last week, the whole Ethiopia and Somalia and the, the massacre of the 147 kids in the Christian university in Kenya. I mean, the, the Muslims came in at gunpoint, separated, the, the Christians from the other Muslims let the Muslims leave and they butchered the Christians. I mean, this, this, this whole uh, uh, stirring up of the South the Bible talks about, it's interesting to watch it start. But verse five, what I want you to see is in Ezekiel 38, who's at the head of the line that's coming against Israel in verse five? What's the first word there in your Bible? Say it out loud. Persia. So we know that Daniel saw there is the Persian politics were being deeply behind the scenes influenced by this high ranking principality and power, this, this demon over a country. Now there's another demon over Greece. He seems to be wasting money right now if you're following you know, uh, current world news. You know, the Greeks are going broke uh, and falling out of the Euro, but, and I'm just teasing about that. Probably there's some uh, prophetic implication to that. But what, what we see is this Persian deal figures in to Ezekiel 38 saying that there is going to be a coming invasion of Israel that is headed up by Persia. Now, why is that? Well, if you read the rest, why is that important? If you look at all those other names in verse five, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya, and with them, and, and all the house of Gomer, and Tagarma, and Meshach, and Tubal, and all that, that group never in history has ever done anything together. This, this is an, a historical anomaly, looking back. Never in history has Persia, Sudan, Libya, Algeria, Turkey, Central Asia, never have they all attacked Israel, ever. This is a coalition coming. And Ezekiel says, the one that's gonna rev it up is Persia. 
If you want to find Persia in the news, it's called Iran. There is no nation on earth that has threatened Israel more completely for annihilation. Now, Hitler just wanted to kill Jews. He didn't care about Israel. He just wanted to kill Jews. The Soviets pogromed the Jews until a million of them fled and went to Israel. I mean, we know history. I mean, the, the Spanish martyred and killed the Jews and on and on. The Crusaders killed the Jews. But no country has so frequently, publicly, categorically, even this week said, there's no reason for Israel to continue to exist and we will destroy them. Not just we don't like them, we're going to boycott them, we're going to apartheid them and economically ruin them. We are going to kill them. Now, last thing, because it's time to go. There's something that always identifies where Satan is involved. Um, he, it says in John 44, Satan was a murderer from the beginning. Satan Satan is always close to murder and, and bloodshed and killing. It's almost like a fly. Satan loves killing. That's why I would strongly encourage you, if you're a young man and you have any desire to serve the Lord, you need to abandon killing video games because you're honoring the devil. They're not neutral. Satan came to kill and steal and destroy. Those are the three themes of most male-dominated video games. Killing, stealing, destroying, you know. Uh, what is it? Grand auto theft, stealing, and killing and destroying are all the rest. Satan's realm, he's a murderer, he loves bloodshed, he loves destruction, he calls his demons abaddon, destroyer, and all that, and this is all the video game stuff. Satan is one who comes to kill and steal and destroy. When Satan is influencing a nation, they only talk about killing and destroying. And I'm not talking about the Persian people. I think the, the Iranian people today, I mean, I, I baptized several, and, and I count Iranians as some of my dear friends. I'm not talking about the Iranian people. I'm talking about the nation of Iran in the hands of its current leaders who are tied to high-up principalities have this unhuman, it's demonic, it's not human, it's a demonic passion to destroy God's chosen people of promise, the Jewish people. And how does it all end? And I'll end now because we only have four minutes. Go to Revelation 12 because what's really interesting is the end of the Bible is all built around all this stuff that Daniel and Ezekiel talk about. God kind of wires it all together if, if you look at the Bible, there's uh, prophecies uh, in Genesis, in Deuteronomy, a uh, few in the Psalms, uh, a lot in Jeremiah, a lot more in Ezekiel, and then Daniel and Zechariah. Those are all kind of streams of prophecies uh, about the last days, but all of them are wired into the book of Revelation. And that's what makes Revelation so interesting. The revelation of Jesus Christ has 404 verses and it has 800 quotations and allusions to, there's even some in Exodus, uh, to all these, these Old Testament books are all feeders into. You can't really understand Revelation without following the, the trails back to what it's talking about. And look at chapter 12. This is just phenomenal. And uh, uh, I think I passed Mr. Tibble's question, but I'll just read this and then we'll quit. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head was a garland of 12 stars. And what on earth would that be? Well, if you go back to Genesis... And you look in the life of Joseph, Genesis 37 to 50, bingo. You know what that's talking about. That's a description of Israel. That's a description of the 12 tribes and, and the whole thing that, J that Joseph saw when his brothers were, you know, he saw all of that. It's interesting. Okay, so we've got Israel. And being with child, so Israel has a child. That's interesting. 
And then comes this dragon. And now it sounds kind of like we're in Lord of the Rings stuff or something. I mean, it sounds like science fiction. And verse four, the dragon gets a third of the stars. That's where we get Satan getting a third of all the angels. That he got one third of all that they fell with him. But look at verse four at the ending. It was ready to give birth to devour her, that's Israel's, child as soon as it was born. And if you have certain versions of the Bible, child is capitalized. This is talking about Christ. So the nation of Israel had Christ, you know, through Mary and, you know, through the seed of, uh, uh, of the woman. And we've talked about the virgin birth and everything, but it was, it was through the line of, of David and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the, the 12 tribes and all that. But look what happens. Verse five, she bore the male child who was to rule all nations. That's Christ with a rod of iron. That's Psalm 2. I mean, all this stuff is just wired back to the rest of the Bible. And her child was caught up to God. Now, that's the end of the 40 days after the resurrection, the ascension. Jesus went up. And so the woman fled in the wilderness and God prepared a place for her for three and a half years. And war broke out in heaven, verse seven, and Michael and his angels fought with a dragon. And all of a sudden, we are seeing in Revelation that Satan has one goal. And he's going to use the nations of the world that will be usable. But Satan's goal is, he has one goal. He wants to destroy Israel. Because God made a sovereign election of Israel. And if Satan can destroy them all, it ruins God's plan. And so the whole book of Revelation is all tying together the promises of God that he has sovereignly made to his people, Israel. Why do you think God parks his throne over Jerusalem? If, if the church took Israel's place, he should park his throne over Rome. You know, the Roman Catholic Church. Or maybe over, I don't know, Nashville or something. I mean, why does he park it over Jerusalem? Because he has sovereignly elected Israel and the whole end of the world is all of these prophecies being revealed in how God defeats the devil, and especially when you get to Zechariah, Satan gets every nation on earth to march against Israel. Not Rome, and not Washington, Jerusalem. Every nation on earth starts going toward Israel. And Zechariah 12 through 14 says that at the last moment, God rescues Israel, and Israel... Jews, look up and see the one they pierce and mourn and are gloriously saved. So, Mr. Tibble, thank you for asking that. You're not even here tonight, um, but I'll answer it anyway. Uh, in modern news, fascinating is there's a Persian connection to Ezekiel 38 which ties the devil into desiring to destroy Israel and the current nation he's really fomenting is Iran. And in verse five of Ezekiel 38, Iran leads the pack against Israel. <laughs> 